Okay, why don't we go ahead and get started. Um, so for the next hour, we're gonna be building Caphook in React. Um, and so uh, I think the breakout rooms are open or they should be open soon. Um, if you wanna work in them, you can, or if you have any questions, you can join the help queue and just choose a breakout room 22 to 28. Um, and of course, we also have the question doc web lab dot two slash questions. Um, before we get started, um, I realized I forgot to mention like how we can reference prob. We we're, we we're only talking about a component specific, but what does the parent component look like? Um, so I'm just going to show you a quick code snippet of like what the post uh, class would be. Um, so this is post is like the parent component over comment. Um, so the way that they interact with each other is that we define another component called a post. Um, and we will import the comment uh, component. Remember that uh, every comment needs to be, every component needs to be exported. So here we're doing export default component. Um, so here we're doing, uh, we're importing the comment. Um, and then in render, we just reference it, right? So here are three different instances of the comment component. Um, and when, whenever we pass in props, the props is just like, uh, look very similar to an HTML attribute and we set it equal to the value of the prop. So we were, so inside the common class, we were doing this dot props dot content. Um, and so we set the content as an attribute. Um, so this is just like one way that like parent, the, the, so the post is the parent component and it communicates with the child component. Um, we'll have practice with writing these. Um, I just wanted to show you what an example looks like. So you kind of understand, you know, what the level above looks like. Um, so why don't we get started? Um, everyone can go to web, if everyone can go to weblab.2 slash profile. Um, so at the end of this workshop, this is our goal. Um, and here, let me actually um, show that here. Th this is what we're going to be developing, not all of it, um, a certain piece of it, right? Um, we're gonna be building Catbook in React. Um, and by the end of this workshop, we're, we're gonna introduce this new cat happiness uh, component and the way it works is that anytime we click on the picture, it'll increase, I'm clicking on the picture right now, it will increase um, our cat happiness value, right? Um, so that's the end goal of the workshop. Um, so we're, we built Catbook in static HTML and CSS on Monday. Um, now we're gonna basically be converting that into React and adding this uh, cat happiness component. And we'll have it update the counter every time you click on your picture. Um, so let's go back to the slides. Um, so uh, everyone should have Catbook React open in VS Code. So launch VS Code. When you're in VS Code, um, you can uh, open up Catbook React, that Catbook React folder. And then you wanna open up a terminal window in VS Code. Um, you can create a separate one like on its own um, and you can use C, the CD command to like navigate to your Catbook React folder, but if you open it in VS Code um, it, and you open up a terminal window, it's already there for you. Um, so I'm gonna uh, do it here. And I'll try to be careful on um, how we do this, right? Um, so this is Catbook React. Uh, this is all the code from the workshop. From, here, let me increase the size of this. This is all the code from the first workshop. Um, and uh, it, on my Mac, there's like a terminal window. I think it's the same like on a Windows, you should see like a terminal window menu at the top and you can hit new terminal and then it'll populate your terminal at the bottom and notice that it tells us we're in the Catbook React folder. So we can run git status and it tells us that we are on branch work, workshop one complete. So this is from yesterday. Um, and so we'll be doing, um, we'll be working on workshop two. Um, so once it's open, uh, you want to run uh, these couple commands. So I'll leave this up for like a minute. Um, git fetch um, is going to allow you to basically get the most recent updates on the branch. We're going to do git reset hard to basically clear any changes we made. Um, and then we're going to do git checkout w2 starter. And then you're going to do npm install. Um, so npm install, what that does is that uh, React um, in, uh, is a node package, right? Um, and uh, we want to run this npm install because we've listed 
Um, on the W2 starter branch, there's a there's a file called package.json. You don't really need to know what it does, right? It's automatically updated for you. Just know that that's basically what tells us what packages we need for our app. Um, and React is one of them. So we run npm install and it will locally uh, include all of them. Um, and if this command npm install does not work, um, if it's saying npm is not recognized, that means you don't have Node installed on your computer. Um, and there's a development guide. You have to install Node. Um, there's a development guide. You should have done it for the setup, but if you haven't, there's a development guide on Piazza. And if you still need help, definitely join the queue because we're going to be using npm a lot. Um, so I'll leave this here maybe for like another 10 seconds and I'll go with you. So git fetch, git reset, space dash dash hard, and then git checkout w2 dash starter, and then npm install. Um, so I will do them here. Um, so I'm going to do git fetch. Let's see if I can make this obnoxiously. Okay. Um, let me just clear this. Okay. We're going to do git fetch. And so now we've updated it, right? We're going to do git reset dash space dash dash hard. And then we're going to do git checkout w2 dash starter. And then we're going to do npm install. And the npm install is going to run a script to install our dependencies. Um, you don't need to worry about what it does. Just know that um, when we're using React, we're using a bunch of packages. Like React is a package um, that basically help build and compile our app. And so they're located in the package.json folder if you're interested in, um, that, interested in them. But it basically locally installs them. So it's going to run the script, and then it should work. Um, so, and if you're not here, join the help queue. If you if NPM is not working, um, you need to get that result fixed. So join the help queue and the staff can help you out. Um, so let's move on and let's get started. Um, so let's look at the component tree for Catbook. So this is an app.js. Remember we were talking about our websites are just one component at the top called app. Um, and we have a higher level component called navbar and uh, another higher level com component called profile. And we're going to be adding the cat happiness component to the profile late, later on, right? So we're at the starter set. Um, so if we open up app.js, um, oh, this is from an old exercise. Um, okay, so app.js, and I'm going to close this for now. Um, so this is already set up for you and it's commented, right? Um, and this is very similar, right? We have these uh, HTML like tags. Remember, we were using class name, class name is specific to React. Um, and it's different than class. And then uh, we do, uh, so the first higher level component is navbar. And then the second one is profile. Yeah, oh yeah, um, I did a short command. I guess I can show you how to do it. Um, so you should see on the left, um, you shouldn't have comment and post. I just added those. Um, but in the client folder, there's two ways you can do it. I'm on a Mac, you can do a file. So um, I did control T, I believe, and you remove the, the tag and it's kind of like the search bar. And you can type in app.js. If you don't know how to go to it, if you don't know how to do that, open up, go into your file explorer. It's the little file window on the left. Go into the client. Then SRC stands for source. And then uh, components, which is like all the React components we're writing. And then it should be in the components folder app.js. So app.js will render. Um, notice how we don't really have a constructor. Um, it depends. You can't have it for an app. It's definitely more common for lower level components, but um, for apps, it's at the top. Um, it gets attached to our web page through the compiler, um, through index. But you don't need to worry about that for now. Um, but here's our render function. Um, and we, we always have to return something in render. We have to return what does app look like in an HTML code setting, right? Um, and our app is not four or five lines of code. Um, it com it's comprised of the nav bar, right? And so by including nav bar here, it's going to say, okay, include whatever is exported as the nav bar component. So it's going to take the output of render of nav bar and same thing for profile, right? So that's what's going on here. Um, so uh, we're going to uh, do a couple exercises. Um, so why don't we look at the profile.js? So um, if you want to do the same command, um, you can do the search bar or this will be, um, here, I'll show you here. So now instead of components, inside the components folder, we're going to go into um, modules. Um, and so modules has 
uh, or sorry, not modules, sorry, pages. Modules is right after this, pages. And pages has the profile.js. So we're looking at the profile page. Um, so after this, we'll go into modules, but right now we're just looking at, at pages, right? So this is a profile page, right? And if you look at it, right, this code is very similar to pretty much almost exactly the same thing as what we did in uh, workshop zero or workshop, the first, whenever we built Catbook in HTML. Um, it's very much the same HTML code, right? Um, and so we're going to be updating this profile component, but um, uh, feel free to take a look at it. I'm going to go on the slides here and just kind of walk you through what's going on. We have our constructor that takes in props, and then we're going to call super props, which basically calls on the, the super class that we extend, which is component. Um, and then profile has a render method, right? And so we can think of, of this code as like different sections of our website. Um, so at the beginning, you have your avatar, right? The avatar is like the, the profile picture. Um, and then the next section we have is like our name. And then we have the horizontal line. HR is like the horizontal line. Um, so one thing you can do is you can actually replace uh, your name here with your own name if you want. Um, and then we have a flex container here that has two, uh, two subcomponents. So the first one is the about me subcomponent. And that, that kind of has its own description. And then the second one has another component that talks about my favorite cat, my favorite type of cat. Um, so that's what's going on in the profile page. Um, and so in order to run our code, right? So these are JavaScript files, but how do we open them in a Chrome tab, right? Um, you wanna run this command npx webpack and do this in the terminal that's at, in your catbook react folder. Um, and what you wanna do is that anytime you save changes, right? If you remember from the first lecture, you would save changes on your HTML file and then hard refresh your, or just refresh on your Chrome or Firefox window, that HTML file, right? Um, but that's like a lot of work, right? We're making a lot of changes. And, and so when we were just doing HTML, it was fine because all we had to do was hit save and then refresh, right? But here, it can be very tedious to uh, make a change on your um, local code. And then we have to uh, rerun this command npx webpack. And npx webpack actually takes a while because it's building all your, it's putting together all your components and bundling them up together and creating a, a new file called index.html. We're actually telling it where to go out. Um, so you wanna try to find this folder, go into the client folder. There's a subfolder called dist, dist stands for distribution. Um, and inside there, there is an index.html file. And so, so that file is going to represent like what our code is in HTML, and it'll have all the scripts that, that work, right? Um, so your command is npx webpack. I'll do it here. Oh, let's get that terminal back. Um, npx webpack. Um, it's going to take a while. Kind of slow. Wait. Uh, mine is still running. Yep. So it ran, and it finished running. And it created this new folder dist, right? The one, this green folder, right? And inside here, there's now an index.html file. So we want to open this. So I'm going to drag this into my Chrome browser. Um, let me actually pull it here. Um, so now it looks like this, right? Um, and it's built. But notice that when you try to edit like a change in profile.js and refresh this page, it's not going to instantly update because what we're doing is we're building the JavaScript files into HTML code. Um, and so because of that, that's kind of a slow and inefficient process. So we built a process, or there's already a, uh, a predefined way to get it started. So instead, we've kind of set up these tools for you. Um, we're combining a Webpack and Babel loader to basically like load your content. Um, and we're combining it with this plugin called the React Hot Loader. And basically all you need to know is that when we combine these, um, it allows us to basically view our updates live on a local host port. Um, and so the way that that works is that you wanna run this command. So, so uh, we already ran MP MPX Webpack um, in one terminal, right? And it executed, right? And it finished. Now I'll run NPM hot loader, but you notice it's not gonna like finish and say, all right, enter a new command, right? Because what it's actually doing is it's creating a hot, it's, we, we're, we call it the hot loader. And all it's doing is that it's constantly sending live updates to uh, your local host um, 
machine at port 5000. So you can access that in Chrome. So I'll leave this up for like maybe another 10 seconds. Um, run npm space run space hot loader as one, uh, one word. And, and when we run it, all we have to do is open up a Chrome tab. We don't need to drag index.html into our Chrome tab anymore. Um, so I'm going to do that now. Um, so I'm going to do npm run hot loader. And so it's running a script, right? Uh, it's telling us that the project is running. Oh, well, we kind of scrolled here. It is the project is running at localhost 5000. Uh, the content uh, webpack output, uh, or yeah, it's telling us it, it, the it'll if we fail it, it'll it has the index.html file from the client slash dist uh, folder, which is what we just saw. So we saw that it compiled successfully, um, and it actually like it's still running, right? So it's kind of this live server that's going on. Um, so I'm going to go back to my Chrome tab, and now I'm going to do localhost colon 5000. And so now, so it's pretty much the exact same thing, but now there's live updates. This will live update anytime you uh, make a change, right? Um, so let's make a change by maybe changing your name, right? So under your name here, so the way you want to do that is you want to go into profile.js and in line 16, um, replace it with your own name and hit save. And then you'll see that it automatically compiles for you. And then if you go back to your um, Chrome tab, it's there for you. Um, so just to repeat that, we are in profile.js. So we ran npm hot loader. You only need to run it once and keep it running. Um, you, you shouldn't be running it multiple times because then it's going to try to open another hot loader at port 5000. It's going to be like, wait, something is already running there. Um, and it'll conflict. And it'll say the address is already in use. So whenever you have a hot loader, only have one instance of it running. Um, so that's, uh, so uh, we opened it, you go to your Chrome tab, do localhost colon 5000, hit enter, it should open this file. Um, and then uh, and then in line 16, of, and then we're gonna go into profile.js, go into line 16 and update it with your name. And when you update it with your name, it should uh, hit save. You have to hit save, and then you'll see the terminal output automatically update. And it'll say what's been uh, generated. And so here we saw profile.js was updated. Um, and then it'll we don't even hit need to hit refresh on Chrome. Um, so um, yeah. Um, so yeah, so why don't we move on to start getting into these exercises? So that's just kind of the setup that we have. You should have your hot loader running in one terminal window. Um, navigate to localhost 5000. And 5000 is just like a port number that we use uh, on your local machine. Um, I think we'll talk about this later when we get into servers. Um, but just know that it's like it's kind of like um, like a little address on your computer that that um, React is sending the changes to, so we can view them on Chrome. Um, so why don't we start by actually writing components? We saw a little preview of them um, in uh, the in uh, in the lecture, right? Um, so the first exercise that we want to do is implementing a navigation bar, a nav bar, right? So we already wrote a nav bar in our HTML code. But now we want to do it in React. Um, so there's kind of two steps that we need to do. Um, and I'll maybe give you like a minute to do the minute and a half. Um, and if you're if you're if you're still stuck on like setup, definitely join the help queue um, because then you, you might fall a little bit behind on this. But uh, I'll give you some time to catch up. Open up two five, or we'll start by going into navbar.js, um, and you'll see that there's a return method in render that we need to populate, right? I think right now it says null, um, and we need to implement it, right? Um, and we want to implement it with the HTML code that we built in when we first built Catbook um, in uh, workshop zero. Um, so there's actually a file um, at the very top of our directory called old index.html. Um, and that's and um, kind of like take some time to go through the code and see if you can isolate the few lines of code that represent the navbar, and you want to put them in the return of navbar.js. Um, uh, yeah, if you need help get <clears throat> if you need help getting to navbar, um, I'll I'll go back to the slide right now. But so we're gonna go into the client folder, go into source, go into components, go into modules, 
and you see, you should see navbar.js and navbar.css. So, and I think it should be commented out in step zero on what you should be implementing, um, and we'll do it together after. Um, so yeah, that's where that is. Um, and then to get to the old index uh, HTML file, it's at the very top level of your Catbook React folder. Um, it's called old underscore index.html and old styles.css. So um, I'll leave this slide up here, maybe give you guys a minute. Um, and uh, yeah, so you should be going into navbar.js going and implementing the return. And in order to implement it, look at the old index.html file and try to look for the few lines of code that represent the nav bar. I think they use like a nav tag. Uh, it's like uh, the caret nav. Um, and then you wanna go into old styles.css and look for like the, I think there's only two styles that are used that are correlated to the nav bar. And you wanna take them from only those two from the old styles.css file and put them into navbar.css. And navbar.css is in the same folder as navbar.js. Um, so I will uh, give you a minute there. Um, hold on, question. Um, Seen a couple of questions on the questions doc. Um, make sure that before you get started, make sure you ran, if you joined us a little bit late, make sure you ran NPM install at the Catbook React folder. Um, so um, the easiest way to do that is just to open up a terminal window. Usually there's a menu uh, bar in um, VS Code that allows you to uh, link terminal. And if it's linked um, to your command line, you can just, uh, run uh, npm, or no, you would run, yeah, you would run npm install from there. Um, and if you don't have npm installed, like I'm saying it doesn't know what to do with npm, that means you haven't set up your environment correctly. And there's a guide on Piazza on how to do it. Um, I think you had to do it before class started. Um, yeah, the question stock, I, can you see it up here? It's weblab.2 slash questions. Um, and I think there's an overflow doc as well. It's like weblab.2 slash questions dash two. Um, so why don't we get started? Um, so if you had time to look at the code, um, so first let's look at the navbar.css. So these are the two styles that you should have found um, and you had to rename them, right? Because uh, if you saw the previous slide, it told us how to rename them. Um, so why don't we do this together? Um, so I'm going to start by opening up old styles.css. Um, and it's this giant CSS style sheet that has a bunch of styles for different containers, right? Um, around line 25, you should see two styles, nav container and nav title. So I'm gonna copy these. So we're in old styles.css and line 25, copy these two styles. And we're gonna open up under client, go to your component folder in modules, go to navbar.css. Um, it should be empty and it should tell you what to do and how to rename them. So I'm gonna copy them in here, um, but we have to rename them, right? So when we rename them, we have to put first put the component name. So this is for nav bar. So I'm gonna do capital N nav capital B bar dash and then lowercase c container. Um, and then we're gonna do the same thing for nav title, nav bar dash title. Um, so we're only focused on these two, right? And so uh, that's where, that's the two styles that we need for navbar.css. Um, oh, someone asked a question. Oh, great question. Um, we actually have, so uh, app.js is like the higher level component and it has its own style sheet. Um, or actually, I think it's even, oh, utilities.css. Uh, this is where it's defined. Uh, so this is like uh, uh, inside uh, your source folder. Um, this is already set up for you, um, but it's, yeah, there's a utilities.css file in your source uh, folder. Um, so we just implemented navbar-container, the way we, we still put the period for CSS styles, uh, and then we put the component name, so it's navbar, and then we do dash title or dash container for each component. So that's the first step. Um, now let's move on to implementing the 
the HTML side of it, right? Uh, so the second part of this exercise is to implement the nav bar. So you should have found the three lines of code in old index.html um, that are wrapped around the nav HTML uh, tag, right? And what you have to do is import them in or include them in the return statement. So remember that the parentheses, whenever we use them in, in JavaScript, they allow us to create a mini HTML environment. Uh, so that's what's going on here. Um, so, and the other thing is when we're using classes, remember to access CSS classes, we use class name because class is already reserved in JavaScript for like JavaScript classes. So we'll React uses class name instead. Um, so uh, to do that, I'm gonna open up uh, old index.html around line 10 and line through line 12, you should see the nav uh, tag and it has this class. So this is what it looks like in HTML. And we're going to open up the navbar.js, which is in source or client source component modules navbar.js. And we can just uh, delete this code here and we're going to put uh, navbar. So nav here, right? But remember, there's a couple of things we still need to do. So we we we, we need to rename class to class name. Um, so these this is like the attribute, um, and then we have to rename the the name of it, right? Remember how there's a certain there's a certain uh, styling that we follow in React, and it's usually the component hyphen the the style name, right? So we define them here as navbar dash container and navbar dash title. Um, so we're going to do that here. I'm going to rename this to nav bar dash lowercase c container and nav bar dash title. Um, and there you go. Um, <clears throat> is it still worth when I, so yeah, so it might throw, I think like it's React has kind of evolved to like say, oh, okay, like he meant to put a uh, class name. Um, this is just more like the standard uh, use that says, um, use class name. Um, and sometimes it might throw you an error in the console that says, hey, you use class. Did you mean to use class name? Um, uh, and then is that the renaming convention? Uh, is the renaming a convention? Absolutely. Um, it's it's more of a convention. Like in theory, you could just leave it as like the old title. Um, but it's pretty much standard when you're building React um, that you create the style name based on the component name and then hyphen and then like whatever the style name is. Um, but it, it would in theory still work if you named it whatever and as long as the names match. Um, but yeah, so let's see how our changes work, right? So when we hit save, we see our hot loader compiled successfully. Um, so we're gonna go back to our Chrome tab. Um, where did it go? I don't know, I think I put it behind you. Yep, here's Chrome tab. And so now the nav bar shows up, right? Before it didn't and now it does. We see the nav bar and it has cap hook, right? Um, so that's kind of a cool, nice step of setting up the nav bar. Um, so you just all wrote your own um, React component, which is pretty exciting. <laughs> um, so if you're a little bit stuck, uh, don't worry, we can get on the same page. Um, now you wanna run these two commands. We're gonna check out to the next step. Um, so run git, git, <laughs> git reset hard, um, and then git check out w2 step one. Um, and uh, what this is gonna do is it's pretty much gonna include the solution for the starter exercises. Um, I'll leave it up maybe for like 15 more seconds. Um, git reset hard. Um, and then, oh, and you wanna do this, um, you wanna do this in a new terminal. I, forget, I guess I should have mentioned that. You wanna keep the hot loader running. Yes, uh, there's already questions about that. Um, you can open up a new terminal. Um, I can actually show you how to do that. Um, so for here, there's two ways you can do it. There's this plus button, but it'll, it'll open it kind of like in a new window, but there's also this like split terminal button icon here that lets you basically create them side by side. Um, but if you did the plus, uh, it'll probably show up as like two and it'll tell you like you're in the next one, right? Um, I, I like the side by side one because it helps. It's kind of cluttered right now because the font size is huge, but it's just to help you out. So I'm going to do git reset dash dash hard. Um, so it kind of undid those changes, but we're actually going to check out to the next step. So it includes those changes. So get and notice actually when it changed, it automatically compiled. Um, so great question on if we should do them in separate terminals. Um, it's pretty standard that you'll be working with multiple terminals. So I'm doing git, ch git checkout w2-step1. 
it's pretty common that you'll be uh, using multiple terminals. And when we start working with servers, you'll definitely need to be using uh, multiple. But for now, um, having two is totally OK. The one on the left has your hot loader. And the one on the right, you can use to run git commands or any other um, command line um, actions. Um, so you should see that the solution is here. Um, I think it's already, it's also updated in navbar.css. Um, so that's great. Um, cool. Um, so now that we're on step one, um, now we want to introduce the cat happiness component, right? Remember, the goal is so that way the cat happiness tells us like the value of how happy our cat is. And when we click on the picture, it gets more happy. Um, it's kind of like how Buka Buka works, but on a very low level <laughs> and not as advanced as Johan has over and over engineered Buka Buka. Uh, but so to do that, first let's look at the skeleton for cat happiness. So now we want to open up the cat happiness component. To do this, um, this is in the components folder and then go to modules. So this should be in the same folder where your nav bar was. Uh, so open up cat happiness and you should now, now we see a component with a constructor, right? It has props and uh, uh, calls on super props and initialize it with the component super class. And then it has a return statement, right? Um, and it has kind of these predefined uh, styles that we've already written for you all. Um, and notice it has that same convention where it takes the, the, uh, the name of the component hyphen and then it has like the style name, right? Container, story, story content, right? Um, and then uh, the P tag, by the way, is just like for a paragraph. So it's just like text. And then the divs are used for like block elements. Um, so for this exercise is now we wanna start uh, adding state, right? Remember we talked about accessing state and then updating state. Um, so we are going to run uh, the first, so the first thing we wanna do is now we wanna look at the component tree for cat book. And I think it might even give you a little um, message in the profile page on like how you to include it, right? Um, so uh, remember, uh, let me see if I still have it open. So app.js has the app and the profile, um, which is very similar to what we saw in the component tree. And then inside profile is where we want to include, yep, it tells us to include cat happiness component there. Um, so that's very similar here. We have our app that has a nav bar and a profile. And then the profile has cat happiness. Um, uh, so uh, where do we think the state of cat happiness should live? Um, so this is kind of, so of all of these components, right? Remember the way the cat happiness works is that uh, when we click on the, the picture, the picture exists in profile, it will update the value of the cat happiness um, um, counter, which is in the cat happiness component. Um, so, uh, any, anyone have an idea on where to include, uh, the cat happiness state? Where, where do we want to initialize this, the variable that will represent the state of our cat happiness? Um, someone said profile, cat happiness. Yeah. So, um, the answer is actually profile, right? And so this sounds a little bit confusing. Like why, why? Like this is a cat happiness value. Shouldn't it be inside cat happiness? The reason why is that that we're doing two interactions, right? When you click on your profile picture, it want which is which exists in the profile page, we want to uh, uh, update the value inside the cat happiness component. Right? And here, cat happiness just represents like the uh, box that that shows like zero and one and two from the demo, right? Um, so. Uh, by doing this, the reason why it's in profile is because we have two different components um, that are interacting with cat happy that are interacting with this value, right? And we want to store it in the in the most uh, like the common ancestor among those two, right? So the picture exists inside profile, and it are and the cat happiness like value where we're gonna uh, put it is in cat the hat the cat happiness component. Uh, so be so profile is kind of like this shared common ancestor between the actual image element and then the cat happiness um, uh, component. Uh, so we're going to choose to initialize it in the profile page. Um, uh, and so here's kind of what it looks like, right? So remember that uh, information gets passed down um, using the component tree. So the profile component that is the parent to the cat happiness component. So the profile component is going to hold the state of cat happiness, which is like an integer. 
Um, and it's going to pass it as a prop. We'll call it cat happiness down to the cat happiness component. So that way, this cat happiness component knows what value to show, right? Because here is where we're kind of maintaining and updating it. And we can pass this information as a prop downwards to any child component. And in this case, we created a cat happiness child component that will accept that prop and it'll in the render statement, it'll actually, we'll actually be able to show the value. Um, so let's kind of walk through how we do that. So first of all, um, where do we initialize state? Can anyone tell me? We do inside constructor or render? Uh, one construct. Yep, the correct answer is constructor. We always in initialize uh, state in constructor, and then we can access it and update it in render or in any other function we declare. But we always initialize state inside constructor. Um, so why don't we open up the constructor? Uh, this is actually in profile.js, this code snippet. Um, so open up profile.js. Uh, so this is in source slash um, components slash pages, and it should be profile.js. And you want to add these three lines of code. Uh, to initialize state, remember state is an object. So we do this dot state is equal to the bracket to represent a JavaScript object. And we say cat happiness and we assign the initial value to zero. Um, so I'll give you maybe like 20 seconds, 30 seconds, and then we'll walk through it together. Remember, we're in, right now we're in profile.js. It's inside the pages folder of uh, components. And you want to uh, go to uh, init, write these three lines of code. This dot state is equal to cat happiness zero. Um, so here we are in profile. So I'm going to write this dot state is equal to, and we create a JavaScript object. Um, and so when we're creating this new variable, and we're going to create cat happiness, and we'll assign it to zero. This is just like how we write our component, semicolon at the end, uh, comma, just because uh, this is technically an object, and there can be multiple keys and values. Right now, it's just one. Um, so we've initialized the state, right? Now we want to connect the component. So we're in profile.js, we need to pass it to the cat happiness component. So remember from the lecture, we were talking about how every component needs to be exported and we import it from previous components. Um, so uh, this is the way we do it. So if you're in profile.js, you wanna write import. So that's how we import. Uh, cat happiness is the name of the component and we do from. So now we gotta tell it where to get it from. And we have to do, we have to basically find the path to cat happiness. And so you see all these dots, all these slashes, right? We're basically doing a uh, file navigation. That's what this is doing, right? So the two dots basically say, go to the folder above me. So uh, we're currently in the pages folder. And this, these two dots are saying, go to the folder above. So I think that's components. Now we're in the components folder at this slash. It says, go into the modules component in the modules folder. So now we've gone from pages to components, and now we're into modules. And then it says, get the cat happiness.js file. Uh, and that's how we import cat happiness.js. This is very common if you've like imported other classes in like Java, um, like you always like import the class from its location, things like that. Um, so I'll leave this up maybe for like another 20 seconds. Um, so I'm going to do it here where this is in the profile component. So because so we're doing import cat happiness from, and then to get to there, we're going to do period, period. So two periods means go up a level from our current directory. Um, and now we're going to go into modules. And then we hit slash again to navigate even more. And it's going to be cat happiness.js. I like to do JS just as a personal preference. You know, it, it'll still work if you don't have it, but um, it's just my personal preference. Um, so now we've imported it, right? Uh, but you highlight it, and if you and every VS code is different, but here, because it's not like a brighter color, it's telling me I haven't used it, right? I've only imported it, but I haven't uh, used it, right? And so how exactly do we want to do this, right? So the next exercise um, is, yep, that's the line. So the next exercise is that we want to um, pass down, or I think this might have skipped a step, but um, first we want to add the cat, or no, it's all oh, one step. First we want to add the cat happiness component in the profile.js, and we want to pass down the prop cat happiness. Um, 
So just as a hint, remember we were talking about the three sections. There's the about me section, and then there's the my favorite cat section. Um, you want to add a section in the middle that will hold our cat happiness component. Um, and you probably want, my recommendation is to, you want to keep the styles consistent, right? So if you look at how the about me section is written and how the my favorite cat section is written, you'll see that they both have a profile that subcontainer div around them. Um, you want to use something similar, right? Um, and this is just an example of how we do component, how we uh, reference components and pass in props. So we do the tag at the beginning. It's like the self-enclosed HTML tag. We put the name of the component. Here we're working with a cat happiness component. And then we put the prop name. Um, we want to set the prop name equal to cat happiness. And then we want to set it equal to whatever the variable we just initialized in our state. Um, and so the brackets allow us to reference JavaScript objects. Um, and if you remember from lecture, um, we access state by using this dot state. Um, so I'll maybe give you like 30 seconds and then we'll kind of walk through it together. Um, but if you're just catching up, uh, we are in the uh, profile JS file. We initialize the state of cat happiness in the constructor. And then we imported the cat happiness component um, at the very top of the file. And now we want to reference that file um, and pass in a prop. We want, and the prop we want to pass in is cat happiness. Um, and the thing about the component, right? It has a self-enclosing tag. So that basically means um, we can, we don't have to do, we don't have to open the tag and then include a closing tag. We can do the slash at the end that basically says this is self-enclosing, meaning it doesn't have anything inside it or underneath it. There's no child components to this. We're just referencing it once. Um, so maybe like another 10 seconds, I'll leave this up. And then if you're still not sure what to do, that's totally okay. We're gonna walk through it together. Um, but uh, try to like look at how the about me and the favorite cat sections were written and try to copy it and then replace the inside content with the cat happiness component. Um, All righty, so why don't we get we uh, get started? Um, so if you look at the render function, right? Um, it actually tells you like right here, insert cat happiness component here, and hint you probably want to add a profile subcontainer to hold the cat happiness component. Um, so let's do that, right? So the first thing we notice is why don't we create the the container that's going to hold it? So that's just a div, um, and we want to add. Uh, class attribute. So we have the opening div and the closing div. We want to set class name is equal to um, profile. We're going to use the same style names as uh, I'm just reading it from here. So profile dot uh, subcontainer and then space u dot text center. What the space is doing is it's basically saying um, we have two classes that we want to apply. Like so, this style might be uh, adding styles that are specific to the subcontainer. And this is a utility class that's centering the text. Um, and when we separate them by a space, it's basically saying apply both of them here. Um, and then uh, in here, we want to introduce cat happiness. So it's actually a different, oops, I misspelled it. Um, and we wanna, so this is how we define it, right? But we, uh, so we reference the component, right? Um, but we wanna pass in the prop, right? And our prop is gonna be, cat happiness, lowercase c, capital H, and we say equals, and then we want to reference our state variable up here, right? So we're in HTML code right now, but we want to access the JavaScript variable. So to do that, we use the brackets, right? And notice that, that they're blue. And so inside here, we can do this, dot state, dot cat happiness. And you hit save. And that's pretty much what you need. Uh, this is in profile. We're not done yet, but this is in profile. Um, no one seems to be answering. Oh, uh, maybe the staff can, if someone on the staff can look at the overflow doc. Um, if the process for creating cat happiness was really difficult, lots of calculations, and we would be doing something different. Um, instead of a new, instead of creating a new cat happiness every time you render. Um, mm, that's an interesting question. Um, 
Well, all we're doing is that uh, we'll kind of show how it goes. The way that we, the calculation is really when you click on the picture and the picture is defined in the same component, um, it's actually this, this component here, the avatar. When we click on that, that avatar, this should update, right? That's why we initialize the state here. Um, I don't know. When it re-renders, it does. So when a component re-renders, it doesn't clear the state. Um, it's re-rendering because we've updated the state, right? So when we hit re-render, it's not setting our cat happiness back to zero. Um, the state is kind of, but like when you um, when you like refresh the page, right? Um, then it loses state, right? But if you're only re-rendering the component, um, then uh, it's re-rendering because the state changed. So it's going to take the new state and display that. I don't know if that answered your question. Maybe ask it on the question doc. Uh, but yeah. Um, so so let's look at our hot loader. So our hot loader should still be running. So let's go to localhost 5000. So I still have it open here. And now we see that there's, the, it should have live updated. If it didn't just hit save on profile.js, and you, you should see this come up, right? So now we have this like box here, right? But there's nothing in it, right? Um, that's because we actually need to uh, tell what tell the cat happiness child component what to do with the prop. So we passed it in a prop. Now we pass the prop to the child. Now we have to go to the child and tell the child what to do with that information. Um, so um, let's uh, move on here. So now, uh, oh wait, yeah. So we've already, this is how we wrote the cat happiness component. We imported it. Yeah, if you wanna add a title, you can call it cat happiness, call it subtitle, uh, header for it. Um, it's optional. I didn't just because I'm focusing on the cat happiness right now. Um, and we use the brackets to reference the JavaScript variable, this dot state dot cat happiness. Um, are we done? As we said, no, the child component is still missing um, its value. So the next part of the exercise is to use this incoming prop. Um, so now let's open up cat happiness. So remember this is in source slash component or client slash source slash components slash modules. Um, and what you want to do, I think there's like a to do a paragraph line. Um, try to see if you can access the value of the prop in that line. Um, and I'll give you a hint that you don't need to declare a value, a variable inside render or inside constructor to hold it. It's already accessible to you that you can do it in one line. Um, so maybe take 30 seconds to see how can you um, access the cat happiness prop from the uh, uh, from here. So we're in cat happiness.js and all we need to do is get the value that's passed into it. So I'm gonna show you here. So let's open up cat happiness. It's in the modules folder. Um, and it notice how it gives us the to do, right? Insert the, the cat happiness challenge. Well, so we pass it, we pass it in as a prop here. Um, so we can do, we can access it by doing this dot props dot uh, cat happiness, lowercase c. And this matches with whatever attribute we passed in as the parent. So uh, you should be writing this dot props dot happiness with the brackets. You need the brackets because we're accessing the JavaScript variable inside HTML code. Um, and, and this name has to match, right? Because props is an object. So we're, we're basically finding a key called cat happiness in that object. And so if the spelling is incorrect or if it doesn't match, then it's just gonna be undefined because it's like you're trying to access something that doesn't exist. Um, so hit save there. And then when we go to our, um, oh, oh, hit save. And then I think it's by here. Um, now, now it shows up. Now we have the zero, right? Because it's referencing what we passed in. And if you remember, the initial state of cat happiness is zero. Um, and so our demo, our end goal is really to get this to update, right? We want, whenever we click on the picture uh, component, we want it to update the number. Um, so I think that's the end of step one. So um, yeah, we in this dot props so cat happiness is how we accessed it. Um, so now let's get on the same page. Um, so do git reset hard and git checkout w2 dash step two. So we'll just like 15 seconds. And if you're stuck or something's not working, definitely ask on the questions doc, weblab.2 slash questions 
um, or add yourself to the queue and you can join a breakout room for one of the staff members to help you out. Yeah, Yassine's comment about server side. Yeah, so uh, eventually, like, you know, you might want to store this information on a server in a database. Um, so that's where you would do more of the calculation. And all we have to do is just get uh, make a request to get that information. Um, but that's a little, <laughs> that we'll be talking about like requests when we talk about service later this week. Um, for now, it's just a state variable. Um, so I'm going to run this on my computer, my VS code. So back in the other terminal window, remember the first one should still have the hot loader running. When the other one, do you get reset dash dash hard? And so it's kind of gonna like remove all the changes we did, but we're just gonna check out to w2 dash step two. And that will have the changes we just made. So if we see cat happiness as this dot props dot cat happiness. Um, and I think the solution should have the H4. Uh, yeah, it added, um, it added an H4 element, the subtitle for cat happiness. Uh, kind of optional, but just keeps it consistent design wise. Um, so this is kind of the last step. Now we want to update the state, right? And we need to change the cat happiness value when we click on the picture, right? So uh, first we want to create a function that will increment cat happiness for us, right? And we want to define this function in the same component that maintains the function, right? So um, increment cat happiness, you wouldn't wanna do it in the cat happiness component um, because the value isn't maintained there, it's maintained in the profile. So that's why we do it inside the profile. And all we're doing is using the cat happiness component to nicely display the value and we pass it in as a prop. Um, so I can't remember if this code is already there for you or not. Um, oh, it is, yeah. So the starter code has already defined the function for you. Um, increment cat happiness is a function. We, we, it doesn't take any parameters, uses this arrow syntax in the brackets to execute this function. And your goal is to implement the function to update the state when the user clicks on the picture. So first, what we wanna do is we wanna basically say, how do we update the state? Uh, now, if you're with us from the lecture, um, what we do, remember we can't do like this.state equals this, or we can't immediately reassign it, right? Um, and uh, this won't work <laughs> because partly because remember there's a lot of stuff going um, on when we update state. Um, when we call a set state or when we try to update the state, it's going to do a lot more than just changing the value. It has to re-render this component. It has to render all the child's components. Um, and there's a whole request. So what we have to do is we have to tell, hey React, um, I'm making a request for you to change the state. And and React will always accept it unless like you do something that like breaks the state or makes infinite calls to set state. Um, and I'll be like, okay, give me your request and I'll process the state change and I'll make sure to re-render your component. I'll make sure to re-render any of the children. Um, so this is not the right way to do it. Um, the correct way to do it is using this dot set state and it takes in, uh, it's a function that takes in our object, right? Um, and there's other ways to implement it. I think tomorrow Kai and Claire are gonna be talking about using um, like the previous state to uh, update the current state um, for, and using a callback function. For now, um, we're just gonna do a very simplistic way. This still works, um, but there's just know that there's a better convention that exists that um, you don't need to know for now, but we'll get into later. Um, and we're updating it to have cat happiness as our key. And then our value is this.state.cat happiness plus one. So we're always incrementing it by one. You can change it, it can be plus five, plus 10. Um, you can change it on your own and it should uh, update. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I'm gonna, I know we're running a little short on time, so I'm just gonna, uh, quickly go through this. Um, so we're gonna delete this line of code. We're gonna put this dot set state and we're gonna take in a function and we're gonna pass in an object to it, right? And we basically wanna say, update the cat happiness value to be the current value, this dot state dot cat happiness plus one. And that's all this function does. Increment cat happiness is all it's doing, right? You can do more logic in here. You can do console.log statements if you want. Um, but for now, we're only updating the state. Um, so we've defined this function. And now we have to tell it to say, OK, when you click on the profile picture, um, it, it should execute that function, right? And we mentioned event listeners yesterday. And that's what we're going to continue to do in React. 
Um, so React uses a bunch, it still uses uh, uh, event listeners, but it does it in a much cleaner way. Um, if you remember from yesterday, we had to do like button dot add event listener, and then you have to put like parentheses click to indicate we're doing a click event listener, and then you have to do the callback function to indicate what to do. Um, here it's a little bit easier. We can actually just tell the div element that uh, we can, there's an on click attribute. It's capital C, so on click in React. Um, I think in HTML it's just lowercase c, but in React we do uppercase c. Um, and you can set it equal to this function. So there's a couple ways we can do that. Um, the first way we can do it is that when we set on click to the avatar container, um, and we're doing the one that's in line 23 of profile.js, um, on click will actually, you can define a function inside it, right? So we define an arrow function and inside this function, it'll execute this dot income cat happiness, um, which is fine. It still works, right? But if you realize what we're doing is we're just defining a function that will execute another function. So we're kind of creating this middle function that is a lot of more work, right? Um, so uh, what we can just shorthand it and reference it, right? This dot increment dot cat happiness, right? That's the function. Does this work? Anyone have a quick idea? It should not. Yeah, it probably doesn't. Yep, it does not work. Um, so the reason why it doesn't is because we have these parentheses right here. And so what it's doing is that it's actually saying inside this JavaScript environment, execute this dot. We're saying run this function, run this dot increment cat happiness. But we don't return anything. So, so it's going to execute and it's going to be null or void or undefined, right? So then when you say on click is equal to undefined. So when you try to click on it, it's not going to do anything. Um, so the correct way to do this is to just exclude the parentheses and just reference the function, reference the name of the function. So it takes in, so now we're seeing, this is what we call a callback function. We're passing in a function as an input. We're telling it that when you click execute this function, this dot increment cat happiness. And, uh, and so, yeah, so if you're setting the attribute of a function, make sure you're referencing the definition or reference of a function, but you're not actually executing it. Um, so this is kind of the summary that we saw. I'm just kind of speed through this because I know Noah's going to go after this. Um, here we defined an arrow function. So that works. So it's just kind of unnecessary though. Um, this is a correct way to do it because we just referenced a function. Um, and this one will not work because we included the parentheses. So it's saying execute before you add the event listener. Um, so this is the correct way to do it. Um, so I'll just show you quickly how to do it on here. Uh, in the avatar container, we can do on click is equal to, and then we reference the name. So this dot increment cat happiness. And when you run your hot loader, um, when you click on it, you should see it updating. So that is pretty much it. Um, if you want to see the complete version of the workshop, um, you can do git reset hard and go to git checkout wt complete. Um, you should still have the hot loader running, so you can play around with it. Localhost 5000 is where you want to go on Chrome, and you should see an update. Um, and yes, yeah, update. Yep. Uh, yeah. So when we add the on click, we're adding it to whatever element it is. So that includes the box. But if you want to um, include it to only the circle, then you would do the element inside. Um, if you want to do it to the whole app, and you can add it there. Um, but yeah, um, you can go to this. Link. I won't show it just because we're Kind of close, um, but if you're still confused on anything, we have office hours tonight. Come check us out. The question stock is still there. The help queue is there. Um, and yeah, if you have any questions on ideation, Git, wireframing, anything we talk about, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, React, um, I think Noah's going to talk about APIs and async right now. Um, but yeah, thanks so much, everyone. And uh, if you have any questions, definitely add it to the help doc. I um, mean, if you still if you still need help on this workshop, um, come to office hours later tonight. Um, yeah, Noah, you're welcome to go. <laughs>